Let's go to Victoria's Latrobe Valley now, where locals have called for the evacuation of the town of Morwell. The nearby Hazelwood coal mine continues to burn and the extended exposure to toxic smoke has alarmed residents. To explain what's being done to protect the community, we're joined by Victoria's Chief Health Officer, Rosemary Lester, and Victorian Health Minister, David Davis. Good morning to both of you and thank you for being Good here. Good morning. David Davis, can I um, start with you this morning? And uh, can you explain to us just why it's uh, taken so long to decide that the situation there in Morwell is so dangerous that people have to be moved on? Well there's been advisories from the start and very clear messages put into the community including advertisements, including um, importantly uh, direct communications to the community, radio uh, announcements and so forth. And we, adv we obviously act directly on the advice of the Chief Health Officer, Dr Rosemary Lester and her team. And the uh, decision was made late last week to upgrade the advisory to suggest that vulnerable people, and uh, that is the, the old, the young, and indeed uh, those with respiratory conditions, uh, pregnant women, uh, would be best to leave town in the case of um, Morwell South. Mm. And Rosemary Lister, why, why was it a, a, a advice upgraded? Well, as you heard the Minister say, uh, we issued advisories from the start. We do know that uh, smoke has short-term health effects. It can exacerbate respiratory conditions like asthma and other chronic respiratory conditions and it can exacerbate heart disease. So from the start we issued advisories particularly to those groups that are most at risk as to how to minimise their um, any health effects from the smoke. We do know that those risks increase with increasing exposure to the smoke. So after taking advice and um, we decided to lift the advisory to make sure that those vulnerable people, or to recommend that those vulnerable people were moved out of the smoke. It is important to recognise though that although we know that the smoke ca can cause uh, immediate health effects, we're actually not seeing serious health effects at the moment, so that's very encouraging. Well, no, you might not see it at the moment, but um, it's known that particulate air pollution can lead to increased heart attack risk. In fact, something was published on that in the British Medical Journal just last month, mm -hmm. looking at that. And um, interestingly, the lead researcher, Julia Cicerone, from the Department of Epidemiology at Rome's Regional Health Service, was asked by Rachel Brown this question in relation to the fire in Morwell, saying, if I told you there's a fire burning in a coal mine in, Vic coal mine in Victoria, that the PM2.5 particulates, which are the ones we're talking about, reach 280 micrograms per cubic metre. Is that disturbing to you? She answered, oh yes, oh God, it's a huge level. What would you expect from exposure like that? More access to hospital, and if the air is largely populated, also an excess in mortality. Why didn't you know about that? Yes, we know about that, Virginia. That's been Did you know about that before? Yes, the, the literature is quite clear that ex short-term exposure to uh, particulate matter does increase acute health effects. Yes, it so took the you, advice... yet, it, yet it took three weeks to say that these people should evacuate? No, the short-term health advice was appropriate for the situation. As I said, we know that those risks are there, but we're fortunately not seeing that at the moment. We know that the risks, of expo the risks increase with increased duration of exposure. So after the, I think at the two-week point, we decided it was best to recommend that those most at risk temporarily relocate. What changed over that two weeks because the, the, the smoke and ash was pretty thick from day one? That's right, it was. But it's a, it's a matter of height of exposure times time of exposure. So a very short spike in exposure um, is, is not nearly as much of a concern as something that's persisting. Now the advice from Commissioner Lapsley to me was that the fire was not likely to be extinguished over the next 10 days at that period. We therefore decided it had been long enough for people to, um, to be exposed and therefore we recommended the temporary relocation. Minister David Davis, given the information that we know, what we know about exposure to particulates, given the length of time that this fire has burned and the length of time it's taken to, to increase the severity of your warnings to people there, how worried are you that you've now created a health problem for people in that valley? Well, we've responded to the professional advice, the same no, advice. I'm asking you no, how, how worried you are. Just answer well, that question well, let, if you can. Let, let me be quite clear. We respond to the professional advice, and it's very important that we do respond to that professional advice. We've had a, a health assessment centre 
testing people, uh, undertaking clear testing programs. And it's clear from those testing programs that overwhelmingly there have not been uh, problems detected. There have not been serious uh, increases in uh, at, at least immediate health effects. There have not been increases in uh, presentations but to hospitals. The point hospital. is heart disease is not necessarily a short-term impact. We're, we're talking years and decades. So the advisories were issued in the early period to give people the warning, particularly to the vulnerable groups. Uh, Dr Lester and her team recommended the upgrading of those advisories to see the temporary relocation of people from Moore South, and that has been actioned as you'd expect. Even the local MP, Ru Russell North, one of your own members, says you acted far too slowly. Well, I've got to say, Russell's a very fierce advocate for his electorate. He also lives area. in the electorate, he unlike does, you and Rosemary Lester. Well, he well, is breathing the smoke every yeah, day. Yeah, and uh, both of us have visited many times over this period. But Russell is a very fierce advocate for his electorate, and there's no question of that. And he's in regular communication, not just with me, but with other ministers David as well. David Davis, you're speaking to us this morning like a lawyer. You're speaking to us this morning as if you've been advised by lawyers. Why not speak to us this morning as a human and understanding the, the situation of the people down there? You sound like you, you don't have much compassion for that situation. Um, Virginia, I think you're quite wrong in that. We have huge compassion and huge determination to support the people in the valley. Uh, and everything has been put behind them that is needed. Any resource that's required has been put there. The relocation supports are there so that anyone who needs support in that relocation process, the respite centre was put in place, the testing, all of those have happened very quickly and very directly and they will have every support that they need. How concerned are you? And I'll ask a question again that uh, you've exposed people through this perceived lack of action to long-term health effects. Well, we've taken the professional advice and that is what is we it, need to respond Is there any concern to. at all? Well, look, it, the professional advice, the best scientific advice that's available is what we've responded to. That's the advice. To. I'm asking you about no, concern, concern that. Well, you, well, you, you as the I, Minister I'm for Health concerned. I, I am very focused on providing the best outcome for that community, for all of Morwell South and for all of Morwell and elsewhere in the valley. And because of that, we respond to professional advice. I'm not, a, I'm not a scientist, and let's be clear about that. Ministers are not scientists. Victoria has a long tradition of responding to the information from the health professionals who understand these things best. Well, Rosemary Lester, do you believe mm. you've got this right? Virginia, it's important to distinguish between what we know about the short-term health effects from short-term exposure to bushfire smoke, and that's why we have the, the standard health advisories that we've, we have in our protocol with the Environment Protection Authority, our advisories about short-term exposure to smoke, because we know what the short-term health effects are. It's quite um, important to distinguish that between what we know about health effects from long-term exposure to, to smoke. For instance, if you lived in a very polluted city, we know there are quite different long-term health effects. So that's where the distinction needs to be made. So do you mean you've got it right in relation to one but not necessarily in the other? Is that what you're saying? I don't quite know what you mean by but that. When but you say, I believe when you say there's I a distinction between provided... short and long, you say you've, you're covered for both, you say? Well, what I'm saying is we're not at the situation now where people are in the same situation that they lived in a polluted city for years. What we're in the situation now is it a relatively short-term exposure, um, a relatively short-term exposure. It had been going on for longer than we usually have with, with bushfire smoke, and that's why we recommended the temporary relocation of those most at risk. But we're not in the situation yet of people being exposed to high levels of particulate matter for years. Before we move on to just one last question on, on the politics for you, um, David Davis, I have to say, sitting here, neither of you sound like... You there's much sort of feeling here. It's, well, it's just, you're, you're, fair, just, you're, Virginia, just, you're just answering honest, questions in terms of fair. how you've been advised and what the, the advice you've, you, you, that you, you've received that covers you for these answers rather than any a real understanding of what these people are going through. Absolutely not the case. We, the importance of responding to the scientific advice and information is that's the best outcome for the community and that's why we're responding to that advice because we want the best outcome for the community. It's not satisfactory for us to make it up as we go along. We have to respond to the best information information, the best advice, because we're concerned about the community and that's why we've got every resource deployed. There's hundreds of um, firefighters in the mine and I've got to say that um, the focus is on getting the fire out on one hand and on the other hand it's about getting the resources there to make sure people have everything they need.